My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative. Science shows that infertility is the inability to conceive after one year of unprotected intercourse or the inability to carry pregnancy to full term. Having had my own personal struggles in that regard, I believe that infertility is deserving of its own talk show, which brings us here. Hello everyone, my name is Nsi Gretton, and this show is called My Fertility Path, and it's brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative. Every week, Myself, alongside some of the biggest voices in the fertility space, will be talking about diverse topics surrounding infertility. The intent of this show is to share real stories about infertility, the struggles, the treatment available, and the joy that comes thereafter. It's not always joy. Welcome to the show. I'll kick off by asking the question, what do Nigerians understand about infertility? Let's find out. When you say there's an infertility case, it means someone has been trying to have a child and it's not happening. Basically, the inability of a man or a woman, you know, to be a kid. Yeah, when either the lady has an issue with um, giving birth, or the guy has an issue with producing sperm, low sperm counts or whatever. What I understand by infertility is that infertility is as a result of when whereby a man is not able to perform the way he should, or a woman is not able to perform the way she should, you know? So and then it leads to having birth issues. Infertility is when a woman is not able to probably give birth to children. Medically infertility can caused by either the male or the female so both of them can be victim of it okay so it can actually be caused by men if they have low sperm count and it's, just, it's not just by the sperm production if the spermatozoans are not alive they are not active so they can't produce a child Obviously, there is so much to be explained about fertility and that is why our maiden topic is understanding infertility. After the break, you'll meet our first guest, who is engineer Ebenezer Shoetan. For 19 years after getting married, alongside his wife, tried to have kids without success. Please stay with us. My guest today is Engineer Beniza Shreta. He's a member of the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative, FI. Himself and his wife struggled with infertility for 19 years. They now have a son. Today, he'll share his story with us. Thank you so much for joining us, Engineer Shreta. It's a pleasure here. Uh, I'm good. I'm glad to have you here. It's a so you too. waited for 19 years. Yes. Could you talk us through your journey? It's a very rough journey, we say. We got married in November 1989 and we waited for a good 19 years. We had our first child, happens to be a male. It's now 12 in July 2008. During the time of waiting, you know, being an African that we were, we are married for one, two years and uh, there is no issue. You know the pressure, very pressure from your family, yes. from friends, mm. from in laws too. Yeah. What is happening? The wife is not conceiving, so we have to be moving from one to the other. And finally, for us, she conceived. We did the IVF, and we had a son in July 2008. He's 11 plus now, and he's in secondary school. He's doing very well. Oh, bless. I need to ask this question. Taking or making that decision to go through with IVF didn't just happen in one day. I I'd like you to take us through your journey, not summarize your journey, engineer. Okay. I'd like you to actually tell me the things that happened, how you felt, what was going through your head, how the pressures. Just let me have your story 
Wow. You know, we have been reading, we have been going through a lot of uh, magazines about IVF, the way people look at IVF, you know, in those days they look at the them as a, being test, book, a test tube uh, babies, are they normal children, would they act normally, how do they look like, are they not, you know, uh, functions, things like that. You know, we started thinking, I don't know if they would meet our mind because we have a cousin who is a, who is a medical doctor, we met him and he, he quite enlightened us. Now look, IVF babies are normal babies. They act and do everything. You can't distinguish unless you are told that this baby is an IVF baby. So then we made our mind, okay, let's give it a try. We went to one uh, facility centre, so that was 2007. So luckily for us, we had the first treatment, our first attempts. She got pregnant. You know, we were there around uh, July 2007. Hmm. And by within five, six months, she became pregnant. So we were very happy. And at the end of the day, before deliver. your joy, yes. what were your pains? Ah. I need to hear that journey. It is, it is terrible. We know. The pressure yes. from family, mm -hmm. from friends. It got to a stage, you know, there was pressure that ah, I should get another wife. Oh, you're kidding. Yes. It's not a matter, it's, it's, it's a fact. In fact, the pressure was so much that people were saying, okay, I have another woman, she won't know, she won't know, we'll be with her, this, this will happen, this will happen, you know, we'll keep her safe, she will be living with us, your wife will not know. But you see, in that me, I felt it is not right. Oh. Whenever the pressure comes, it got to a stage, I ensure she avoid every activities in the, that is coming up in the family. If there's any engagement I have to bring in the family, no, don't go, don't worry to go, because if she's there, the question is, is she pregnant? People become asking, it's for our family, my family, my friends. So we have to quite isolate ourselves from friends and family. That must so have been very depressing. Well, it is. Well, what can we do? Because if you are not very strong as a man, definitely you will have another woman. Because usually in this concept of our side, you know, we always think that there is a problem of not conceiving. The, the, the thinking is that it's always from the woman. Going through IVF made me understand that it's not only a woman that has a problem, it can be from the, it can be from the man yes. also. So, but our setting does not always think that a man can have a problem. Well, yes. So, but at the end of the day, we made our mind that, okay, let's try IVF. And we were very fortunate, you know. First attempts, there we go. She became pregnant. In fact, by the time she became pregnant, the pressure of people are even thinking, is it real? Is it really pregnant? How far can is it really they pregnant go? Until she, until she delivered. Well, even when she delivered, so people are even asking questions. That is, is she breastfeeding the child? <laughs> Actually, when we got home, when we got home, about you know, because she stayed in the about uh, two or three weeks after after the delivery. Yes. The day she came home, you know, people came to her house and then, is, 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 is the baby is he sucking breast? Ha. Can you breastfeed this? <laughs> but because, you know. because, because you know, actually, because my wife too was, she was very happy. She was earlier, so whenever anybody comes in, she would just, she would just breastfeed open, open her breast and put, and keep, put on feeding the, keep on feeding the, keep on feeding the baby. So people will know. So there won't be any doubt whether she's breastfeeding or not breastfeeding. So when we think, okay, can, can, let me touch the baby. Is it, is it really, is it really, is it really active? Are you is joking? it a toy? You know, but we know, we know such thing will happen. So we don't really fear. We don't really, uh, you know. Consider as a kind of humiliation, but we know that our joy has come. So definitely, we're happy, and that's it. He's now uh, going to 12, uh, July, in July, he'll be 12 years old. Oh, that's lovely. So, okay, people ask, people wonder, yes. how expensive was it for you? What is the cost, what was the cost implication at the time? At that time, yes. we, no, there, there is no amount of money that we think is expensive, mm. because what you are looking for, that expectation, it's more higher than whatever you are spending. The humiliation you have been going through, you can't compare what you're going to spend. Oh. So you may look at it as very expensive, but then it's not expensive because that cost you can't, it's incomparable. Having a child, if I have two or three buildings, can I compare with a child? No. That's I'm so of, sorry to hear the humiliation the you went through. So you can't, you can't, you can't really value the cost. So you expensive. would say it was worth it? I would say it's worth it. You can't consider it as expensive. To me, it's not expensive. It's not. Thank you so much. Thank so when much. we come back, Engineer you know, Shoyton will still be here with us, but we will be introducing you to our resident doctor, Dr. Bayomi Ajayi. Please stay with us.
You're still watching My Fertility Path. I've been talking to Engineer Shoetan, who has been sharing his story with us. I'd like to introduce you to the show's resident doctor, Dr. Bayomi Ajayi, a veteran in the fertility space and the CEO of Nordica Fertility Center. How are you, doctor? I'm good. And how are you feeling about this show? Great. And it's so awesome that you're the one that I'm joining for this program. So <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so you heard Engineer's story. Yeah. What do you think were the major issues behind his story? Well, um, Engineer Shreton, yeah, um, this, there's a social part, there's the medical part. The social part is the fact that he was able to hang on for such a long time despite all the pressures. And the medical part was that they were so lucky that only just after a trial they were able to have a child. All right. And uh, well, I must say that's probably not the norm. There are so many people that are that lucky. But what we try to tell people is that when you want to do IVF or you're planning to do IVF, you should plan to do more than one. Okay. The truth is sometimes we really do not know or understand what the true causes are that's of right. infertility. So what are the major causes of infertility? And I'd like to bring it home and say in Africans in, in particular. Well, good. Um, whether we're Africans or anywhere in the world, we are all human beings. So the yes. causes are almost the same. So we can categorize them into four major categories. The male factor, mm -hmm. the female factor, when the two of them combine factors, and then the unexplained. Now, the, the male is when the man is solely responsible for infertility in mm -hmm. the union. The female is when the woman is solely responsible. Combined is when the two of them. And then the unexplained is when we have done the regular test to investigate for infertility and we're not able to find out why the couple is not having a child. Yes. But you know what I say to people is that we don't treat test results, we treat people. So even if your test results are saying that there is no problem and still you can't have children, that means there's a problem. There's a problem. So and that is where the unexplained infertility comes in. Comes in. Thank you so much for inspiring us with your story, <laughs> Engineer Shreto. Thank you. Are there any words of advice you would have for someone who's struggling or a couple who's struggling with infertility and isn't sure about making a decision? Well, that's a very good question. My advice to them is that they must be very patient. They must show love to each other, caring and understanding. Because if they are not patient and they should not listen to pressures, they should not fall to any pressure. Because then they will be pressures. Yes. They must make up their mind that, okay, we are doing IVF and they must be committed to it. Yes, I can understand the pressure, the pressure yes. part because especially with these days of social media, you have people asking questions, apart from people who even face you and ask you those questions, they're constantly saying, when? It's two years old. It's three years. They start counting mm -hmm. literally for you. And that's very heartbreaking. Yeah. What I say about couples is that is infertility either makes you or breaks you. You huh. have to <laughs> you yes. have to fall into one category. Yes. Yeah, for because some couples like Engineer Shweton, it's made them very strong. You know, the, the their union is very I can say to that they, their union is very strong. <laughs> is it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've known them well for, done. Quite, uh. for quite a number of years, you know, so and they've been I agree with you on that because I know that infertility can break a couple it's really and it actually. takes, it takes tenacity, it takes a certain amount of love, understanding and trust to be able to stay together as a couple through that journey because it is a challenge. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, the only way I don't agree with you is the love part. I, I, I think it's overrated. You, it needs a lot of understanding. But what? love. No, seriously, because you see, when we say love. Yes. Oh, okay, that's another topic. Okay, let's go on with But that. I agree with you. You <laughs> must continue. Yeah. <laughs> you must yeah. be committed to each other. You exactly. must be committed. Must be but yeah. love also allows you to be committed. Okay. A certain amount of love. I'm not yes. saying love is everything, mm. but love is important. It is. Oh, it brings people together. Uh, well, and togetherness will bring a child. And you know, sure at all. I need to ask you a question. Was there any time you were tempted to go have a child outside wedlock? Like your marriage, your union with your partner? 
Not really. Even though there are pressures, but I do not succumb to such pressures because I've never mind that, okay, it's not to me then. Having a child or children is not the bone of the real reason why we are together. I love her, she loves me. So let's move ahead. That's my own mind. But you know, as a woman, she felt, you know, we must do our best to have a child. So there yeah, we keep on trying and trying. So doctor, let me ask. I saw a flicker in your, your eyes when you said that the reason why they came together, I, well, I just noticed. Well, and I, so you want me to say something? <laughs> no, 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 I'm no, glad no. you noticed so I can talk about it. Because it was the same statement that my partner said to me. He says, that's not the reason I'm with you. It really doesn't matter if you have or cannot have. That's not a reason of... And so it, 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 it's, it just took me back home that there are people like that. So he wasn't really abnormal for saying that. So I've met a second. So thank you for keeping the faith. Thank you, thank you too. <laughs> for people like me. <laughs> we have hope. Okay, there's yeah. always hope. Yes. So doctor, let me ask, when you have a couple who come to you and say that they've tried everything. And when I say everything, they've been through the process over and over again. What do you say to them? Well, I think, um, let me tell you a real story. Thank and you. Um, I met a couple about uh, 10 years ago and they, they had been everywhere. And I mean everywhere. They've done IVF in, in Spain, they've done in France, they've done in the UK. They've done 10 IVFs by the time I met them, 10. And um, so, but the fact that they came to see me showed me something. They still wanted, there was still this unmet need in their lives. And so we had a chat and blah, 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 blah. One thing led to the other and they had only one cycle with us and they were pregnant. And that's the child that they have till today. Um, and they it, she was 43 at that point in time. It's not about age. Why I can't forget the story was that when she became pregnant and the, the pregnancy test turned positive, this was a woman that is about uh, maybe five feet, um, seven, eight. Yes. Uh, maybe about uh, 60 something kilograms. She attempted to lift me up. <laughs> <laughs> this is about my weight. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't dare. And I said, okay, oh no, 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 please. Let's just keep it as it is. <laughs> She must have been so excited. She was, uh, she was elated. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. That was a beautiful story. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Engineer Shoeto, and for much. sharing your story with us. When we come back, we will continue this conversation with Doctor. We also will be going to the social media space to treat some of your questions. You're welcome back to the show. We've been introducing you to the topic of infertility, demystifying everything you thought you knew. There are questions, and I'm going to be asking Doctor. That's why I'm here. I know. So <laughs> what are the most common um, treatment forms for infertility? Okay, we could look at the, drug, the treatment from three parts. Yes. And say that there can be drugs, Yes. There can be surgery and yes. there can be assisted conception. Okay. Uh, drugs can be for women and for men, especially when women don't menstruate regularly or they don't ovulate, we can use drugs to make them to ovulate. That would be hormonal. That is hormonal. Okay. Now, um, we could also do surgery, so form of surgeries mm -hmm. for women who probably they are not also, there is a surgery also for people who are not ovulating though we are beginning to run away from that because it's more invasive than what drugs can do. Yeah. So, but also there used to be tuba surgery, very popular at the stage. Very few people That's do That's a fallopian tube. Exactly. Very few people do that now because there are probably better ways. You know, let me start by saying that the commonest reasons why people have infertility in this environment will be low sperm count or abnormal sperm parameters mm -hmm. and blocked fallopian tubes in women. 
So, and so that's what we're trying to look for treatment for. All right, so for those two, drugs don't really work. All right, because we do, like we said, drugs only work for people who have problem with ovulation. That's just a very, about five, 10% of people in this environment that fall mainly to that category. All right, because majority of the other people, if they're women, their tubes are blocked, if they're men, sperm count is low, drugs don't work for the two. For a blocked fallopian tube, yeah. what happens? Okay, for blocked fallopian tubes, um, the best way to treat now in 2020 is to do IVF. IVF? Yeah, because um, you know, the, what's the problem here is that even we can unblock these tubes through surgery. All we, right? but, but, through okay. surgery. I, I remember something, um, HS... HSG? Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, it's a, it's a radiological <laughs> test to yes. see whether tubes are open or they're And closed. sometimes that can help to open it. Um, Does it ever happen that way? It can, yes. but you don't do the test for you to want to open tubes. I, I get where you're coming yeah, from. Exactly, because sometimes accidentally they can open tubes. And many, a few papers have been written in the past about people getting pregnant after HSG. But now we know because with tubal pathologies now, or problems with the tubes, mm. the problem is not that we cannot un unblock these blockages as it were yes. through surgery, but the problem is that you cannot re retain the function of the tube. Because the tube essentially is to transport eggs, eggs to the, the uh, fertilized egg to the uterus, and then uh, also to pick up transfer sperm to where uh, fertilization takes place. takes place. And for it to do this, it needs some what we call ciliary bodies, like they are air-like growth mm -hmm. inside the tube. You know, they're very tiny. So once these are destroyed, you can even open up the tubes. They function, it can't function. And so that opens you more to the risk of having an ectopic pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy that is not in the right place. That's and that tubal. Be, yeah, that's tubal pregnancy. So, and that's why right now when there are problems in the tube, the best way to treat actually is through doing IVF. So that's why I said three categories, drugs, surgery, and then assisted reproduction. So for instance, after ectopic um, pregnancy now, um, for instance, a patient has come in after, um, and then they've probably had an oculation, which is, well, okay, let me put it this way. Or the, you know, nipping off the tubes. Mm -hmm. Can they still bear children through IVF? Oh, sure. You don't need the tubes for IVF. Oh, great. The first person that had a um, baby through IVF, well, the two tubes were already gone. So you don't need tubes for IVF, actually. They bypass the function of the tubes. Of the tubes, because it's direct. Exactly. Okay, yes, that's what it is. All right, doctor. Thank you so much. But we're going to check social media now and treat some of the topics out there. So I picked up um, a few questions. Yeah. I'm going to ask, yes, she says, what could be the possible reasons for a woman who's observing her menstruation not conceive a year after marriage? Yeah, well, that's a nice question, but unfortunately, it's difficult to answer because the first thing that you want to consider is the woman's age, all right? Because we know that one of the things that does not make women to conceive easily is age. Okay. So if we had the age, we probably would be able to profile more solution. But as it is, what I would advise that such a person should do is go to a doctor for an evaluation, all right? Because no matter her age now, she stayed for one year and there's been no pregnancy. So she needs a proper evaluation. And, and when do I need to see a doctor about my infertility? So they're talking about the timing. Yeah, that's right. Um, the recommendation is that if you're less than 35, you can try for one year and then you see the doctor. If you are over 35, you try for six months. And trying means that you're having regular intercourse, which is you're having intercourse two to three times in a week. Two to three times in a week. Yeah, without any form of contraception. Okay. So what could be the major cause of low sperm count? And what are my treatment options? Well, uh, low sperm count, I'm sure that we're going to have an episode on male factor infertility. Yes, we will. Which is, uh, low sperm count, it's, uh, it's a little bit dicey because there is no one reason that we, it's easy to deduce as causing low sperm count. The genetics could be at play, 
the environmental exposure to mm -hmm. pollutants, occupational exposure to pollutants, the lifestyle, and of, of also the use of hormones are common things that uh, plague male, uh, male fertility these days. Okay, someone here says that after having 10 abortions, I've had multiple miscarriages as well. Can this have an effect on my fertility and can I still be considered for IVF? Well, you see, the, what I hear here is probably termination of pregnancy. Yes. Willful termination of pregnancy. Yes. Well, once your tubes are not, you see, that's where nature actually is so funny. Once your tubes are not compromised, once you, the man has good sperm, Yes. Even if whatever has happened to you in the past is in the, the past. past. So you can get pregnant. So but and some it's possible for somebody who is a virgin, just got married, and then the husband has very low sperm count and they, they're struggling with fertility. Okay. So really and truly it's not fert what I want to drive out is that infertility is not a result of being promiscuous in the past. Are you saying that abortion is a sign of promiscuity? <laughs> If you, that's why I asked, willful termination of pregnancy. Yes. Well, if you had 10 and you don't, you are not, you're telling me that it's not promiscuity, then tell me what promiscuity is. It's means. just a choice. Okay. She just made a choice not to have the children. That's my take. Okay. I'm pro-choice. Uh, all right. As a person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so someone says here, I think I can still take this last question. She says, um, I've heard acupuncture helps with fertility. How true is that? As a scientist, I'm a little bit uh, weary about it because in science, we say that it must be evidence-based. Yes. Yeah, and um, there's not enough evidence for me to strike my chest and say that. I but there is no that. doubt that acupuncture helps with relaxation, takes away stress. Yes. And, uh, but whether... It, whether you want to use it when your tubes are blocked or your sperm count is low, oh, I'm God, not sure God. about that. <laughs> and I'll, okay, I think I can still ask this question. Oh, sure, 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 sure. How old is too old? How old is too old? Um, you know what? With technology now, it's almost impossible to say somebody's too old. But ethically, yes. we try to put a bar. Many clinics try to put a bar. Yeah. Some countries also put, try to put a bar. Yes, they do. Because what I tell people sometimes is that if you are 70 years old and you have a 10-year-old, I don't think it's fun. You can't have fun with that you, It's not fun. I mean, you just don't have the energy. No. And there's... Okay, so that's where sometimes I say, if you're above 60, please... Mm. Personally, I would say it was selfish, but I guess that's a personal opinion. Thank you so much, Doctor. I'm sure we're going to have so much fun on the show. Yeah, I look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you so much. My favorite quote on this will be, always remember, infertility should never define you. See or talk to someone today. My name is Ansi Gretton. Keep sharing, keep educating, and I will see you next time. My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative.